Hey there, I'm going to show you some of the logic behind my Fun and Games app where I take this random number and assign them to an image that gets displayed. So here, for example, the image that gets displayed is dice. Um, the see, Just so you see how, the, uh, how it works, I roll some dice. If I choose one, it'll roll one die and present the value. If I roll two die, it'll present two die and present the sum of those two values. So how this works is in my sheet. I have a resources column here where I have um, the dice value and then the dice image. I also have here the base 64 version of this image, um, which will allow me to do an overlay of one next to the other for uh, when they roll two dice. And that's part of Cloud and Aries formula, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Then when they fill out the form, right, this how many dice they're rolling gets sent to the dice count column, their email address, timestamp, so forth. And then the dice one random number gets sent to value and the dice two random number gets sent to value two. So that is here where I have this random number being sent to value and this random number being sent to value two. Now, the reason why I couldn't just use this number to be displayed in the app is that every single time the sheet changes, these numbers get changed because of the random array, because of the random formula here, this ran between formula one through six. As you'll see, if I just put some nonsense characters here, see how this whole column gets changed? If I just keep going, see how those two columns just keep changing randomly one through six? So that means every time the sheet gets updated, which is either by this user or any other user using the sheet, these numbers would change and then would change um, the images that get displayed in the app and it would look really funky having their dice rolls keep changing on them automatically. It would just be... F so what I had to do is preserve the original uh, random numbers by putting them in their own column, value and value one. And you'll see that I do that for all of my other tools here as well. Okay, and then I also get the dice count of how many they're rolling, either one or two. All right, from there, if I go to the data here, so here's the uh, value and value two of those original rolls. And you'll see there's the dice three, and there's, where's the image? Okay, so there's dice three. And then I did a lookup to get the image of these values. So there's the lookup for this image here. And then for the second die, um, it has to be the base 64 version in order to do the cloudinary overlay. So instead of grabbing the actual image for the lookup, I grab the base 64 code. Um, then I have a if then here to show that it, if they only roll one die based on the dice count, it'll just show them this image. And if they roll two die, then it's gonna show the Cloudinary URL, which has the two images side by side. Um, that template is a little funny, but basically it's your Cloudinary information followed by fetch. And then I'm fetching the original image, that's the first die roll. And then I'm overlaying the base 64 version of the second image. And that's the uh, that's just the formula that I found online by putting images side by side on Cloudinary. And so again, so if it's one, it shows the image. If it's two, it shows the Cloudinary image. And uh, then I have some computation here based upon whether it's one die or two die. If it's one die, it's going to show just the value of the first. If it's two die, it's going to show the sum of both of them. Um, and then I have that being displayed dynamically in the app. So here, if I go back here, this inline list is showing the combined value, right? So if it's one die, the combined value is just the first. If it's two, the combined value is both. Uh, details of the timestamp, just so you can verify that this is an, indeed a new roll, just in case, um, you know, you keep rolling the sixes for five times in a row, you notice that they are legit new rolls. And then the image is that dice if, so if it's either one die or two. It's going to present that image, either the cloud and area or the original. And then um, just I have some different tile settings here, and then just to make sure that everybody gets their own version, um, I have it set to email assigned in user, and that the timestamp is in descending order, 
it means they're always going to see the latest role here first, and then they can scroll through their previous roles. And that's it. And I have that done in various ways with flipping coins, right? Are doing an eight ball. This is a cloudinary image as well. So this eight ball at the blank triangle is actually just one image. And then I'm overlaying the text on top of the image based on what number is randomly chosen. So I didn't have to create 10 different images, for example. Uh, name picker. So users can put in their own names. It's going to do a random number one through however many names they've chosen and then present that with the image of the person as well. And then they can go through and add more names. It'll die, it'll, then that random number will increase as they add more names. Uh, they can also go through and they can delete a user here as well. So if they don't want this user anymore, they can go through and delete the item or change the image or change the name of the person here as well. Nice for teachers who want to pick people at random, right? And then rock, paper, scissors, which is pretty fun too. I'm still trying to figure out the, I'm gonna work on the, uh, the interface of this, but you have your rock versus paper, rock loses, right? I play around, I'm gonna choose paper, paper beats rock, so that's a win. I think it's my all-time record. This was, figuring out the all-time record here was a little tricky, but I was able to figure that out as well. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.